Hi, so this training session will focus on the junior quality assurance engineer role. Um, I wanted to make it really easy because uh, it really is easy. Um, first, if you understand the product, that's one, that's like half the battle right there. Just understand the product. Uh, understanding how the product is going to be used that's the second battle um, that's like 80% of all you need to know to be a junior QA engineer uh, the rest of it uh, I mean understanding the tools that are being used that'll help you kind of um, with your testing understanding technologies being used it'll kind of help your understanding of um, how the product is being built how the product gets to the consumer, the user. Uh, executing test cases. So test cases are basically just a set of instructions that you need to follow. To give you a better understanding of it, um, you can do a Google search. Uh, you can first link in the Google search is all I clicked. And then here you get just the whole test case template, the broiler plate of, of what, what it is. It looks very complicated. It's not. It's like I said, it's a set of instructions. All you have to do is follow the instructions and you're gold. So um, when you execute the test cases, you know, uh, you're going to find issues. If there are issues, uh, they're going to be called bugs. That's the terminology in the quality assurance world. And you write up these bugs in a certain way, and uh, they'll, you'll, they'll be put into a bug database. Once the developer fixes these and puts up a new build, you're going to verify that the bugs uh, are, are fixed in the new build. And then basically the rest of the time, you're, you're just trying to understand the QA methodology being used at the company you're in. And um, that's just going to be different for the, the companies that you're at. So I can't really, uh, really explain to you the company that you're going to be working at, what QA methodologies they're going to be using. They, it could be a lot. It could be very, very traditional. It could be pretty new. It could be totally different um, for example if you're at Google you're going to be doing everything automated I don't think that's the route you're going to take you're going to probably go the manual testing route um, basically an example is that I like to use I, I like using any example just anyone that wants to come up with an example of what a test case is uh, for example uh, back to the future when DeLorean goes 88 miles per hour it goes to, it tra it travels through time so you set the settings in the DeLorean uh, in the time machine and then you drive it and then once DeLorean hits 88 miles per hour it travels through time so if you hit 88 miles per hour and you weren't traveling through time um, that would be considered a bug because what you're expecting to do is travel through time uh, and you would write up a bug saying alright uh, I set my travel time travel settings I drove to DeLorean the speedometer said 88 miles per hour and I wasn't traveling through time uh, and that, that was what you're expecting and that was your result um, now you can take it a step further and investigate it more and that's called troubleshooting and you would do more tests and you would see well how, how fast do I have to go for for me to actually time travel and then you would say reach the, the max speed of DeLorean say the DeLorean's max speed was 98 miles per hour uh, if it hit 90 miles per hour and you time traveled uh, then you you would put that once you hit 90, 90 miles per hour or 92 whatever it was um, you were able to travel through time and then uh, they would 
the developers or wh whoever's fixing the issue would go, okay, look, uh, the speedometer is, is off. So they just dialed it back. All right. Um, they, like, say they would use like a radar gun or something. And they would go, okay, the, uh, you're actually going um, 80, 86 miles per hour when, when the speedometer said you were going 88 miles per hour. So that was the issue. And now you need to verify that that it's fixed. So you drive, you would hit 88 miles per hour and off you go, you're, you're t traveling through time. And that means that the bug is fixed. So that was very simple, right? Uh, that's what you're gonna be doing. That's software quality assurance testing. I mean, that's not software, sorry. The, the example wasn't software, but basically you know what I mean. Uh, so that's it. Uh, and if you do a quick search uh, through for jobs, um, just put in the city that you want to work at, type in junior quality assurance, and you can get a list. Uh, Indeed.com seems pretty good. Um, Craigslist doesn't seem to be used very often anymore. LinkedIn would probably be good. Uh, so Indeed.com, if I clicked on it, this is what I saw. I just clicked on the first one, and it shows a quality software assurance engineer by Pyramid Technical Consultants. Again, you're not working for that company. You're working for that company, but basically you're working at another company through them. Uh, so, uh, but $60,000 a year is what it is, and it gives you a whole bunch of details. What's good is you actually, you know, see what the primary responsibilities are, and uh, focus on those. It's it's really uh, not complicated. Once you're in, you're in. Um, if you can't follow direction, direction instructions, uh, that could be a problem. If you don't understand a product or and how people are going to use it, uh, that could be a problem. So the first uh, month is very important when you're actually working. You want to make sure that you understand the product. Right? You want to understand how the product is going to be used. And then you're going to need to learn how to follow instructions. Um, it's basically a lot of understanding. If you're not technically inclined, you're going to have to start being um, learning a lot more about technologies. Maybe just navigating uh, your computer and just kind of seeing how it works. And uh, but it's it's not too bad because a lot of the stuff that you use is is on your computer these days or if not on your computer on your phone but your you know email like pop3 email it's all uh usually web-based so you know how to use a browser you've been to internet sites you you probably know how to use skype you've you've video probably done facetime with like your relatives if you have kids and whatnot or even if you don't have kids you probably you know done Skype um, you probably had some jobs where you I mean you probably have to work in your resume on Word you probably use Excel once in a while or a version of Excel a free version of Excel uh, so it's it's understanding the the tools and technologies is just part of it it's not a major part of it but it's gonna help you so uh, focus on these things and you're going to be you know set for two three years until you want to reach that new level and you know you can't complain about a job that's paying you 60 grand a year right you, there's no degree i mean even though uh this one might say uh bachelor's degree required nah uh, if they're really looking and you're really smart, you're really good in an interview, very personable, they'll probably say, you know, uh, because you don't have a college degree, mm, how about we're going to offer you 50 grand a year. And all you do is you haggle. You say, uh, I can do the job. Um, I've 
and then do like state your case if you don't have a case to say um, how about 55,000 a year worst they can say is or 56 grand a year and they'll say okay well we'll settle on 52 grand a year so that's still good uh, I mean when I was work starting off as QA I was making I don't know eleven dollars maybe not even that an hour so and that was like less than 19 15 grand less than 15 grand a year so it was it was horrible but right uh, whatever you can find and uh, really start understanding again everything that I pretty much show here uh, what is this Ooh, stars okay well that's not showing oh I closed it that's why uh, that was dumb but I get a nice little star going Oh, I was doing so good. Uh, I'm not going to edit it. But anyways, hopefully this helps, right? Just go back in the video. Really simple, because it is simple. And that's it. And I'm going to go on to a little bit more advanced stuff uh, in the other videos. Um, maybe we'll go through step by step in this job description, the, your responsibilities, and just kind of see how, how it fits. And... Um, what you would actually be doing so uh, maybe that'll be the next training video for quality assurance all right back